Alrighty, here we are again. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We are going to watch some more disturbing videos. I'm going to give you guys my biblical advice and whatever the Lord is instructing me to give. And I just ask that you guys are able to receive what the Lord is saying through me and just through this video. We have to take heed and know the times that we are in and just use wisdom before making any rash decisions. And of course, take it all before the Father because we need direction and guidance that only the Holy Spirit can provide us in this hour and in the hour to come. So the Lord gives us insight that we should take heed to and the enemy is constantly revealing himself. So take a look at these videos. All right, guys, taking you back, we discussed on this show and it definitely made headlines all across the world. The teacher in Canada, never know what's going on in Canada. I don't know. I just I need to speak to some Canadians about what's going on in Canada, who had the Z cup prosthetic breasts, who was teaching wood class and predictably, obviously, called caused an outrage amongst the parents that were at that school. That teacher, that school was Oakville Travelgar High School. And eventually, the teacher in question, Kayla Lemieux, wound up leaving due to ongoing security scares and death threats that were coming. Parents were angry. What is, what is this? What are we even looking at? Uh, why would my child have to go to school and see this every day? This is an outrage. Uh, what you have here is a male wearing prosthetic breasts, wearing a short skirt, obviously. Not even, and I want to be clear here. Uh, Kayla does not identify as trans. You are not misgendering Kayla to call him uh, him. Kayla identifies as intersex, which means either both or neither. You call him a him, you call him a her. Do not allow people to think that you can't discuss this as what it is, because I know YouTube policy is misgendering. Nope, Kayla has come out outwardly and said, I am intersex. So Kayla clearly is a biological male, and parents have had to look at this every day while their child went to school, and eventually Kayla left because it caused so much outrage. Well, it turns out as an update to the story that Kayla is now teaching at a new school, the Nora Francis Henderson Secondary School in Hamilton, Ontario. Now, I'm just going to, I want you to look at this image of Kayla when he's not wearing his breasts. It just, this is a photo that was captured of him walking down the street, heading to his car, looking totally normal. And then you find out this person goes home, puts on these prosthetic breasts, and then also is trying to delude the public into believing that these breasts are real, uh, saying that he suffers from a condition called gigantonastia, which makes him have huge prosthetic breasts. I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor. I want to be very clear. But I don't know any conditions that would cause you to grow prosthetic breasts when you go home uh, with very hardened nipples that you would have to wear to school. I can't think of any uh, physical condition that would cause that. I could think of some mental conditions that might cause that. If I were a psychiatrist, I'd probably have a better guess as to what was going on than if I were a, a doctor that was working in the medical field at a hospital, per se, um, or a surgeon or a, a physicist, so to speak. Now, What's really interesting here and something that I want to make clear is people like to say this is left versus right. It's not that. I want to be clear. I don't think this would ever happen in America. And, and maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm silly to think that it couldn't. But I actually believe that even the people that are the furthest implanted on the left would look at this and say this is wrong, right? I don't think that there is a single person as far lefty as you are. You can be an eco-warrior. You can drink the cardboard straws that melt in your mouth. You can hate Trump. You can hate conservatives. You can be out protesting for babies to be killed nine months in the womb. But I think that when you see this... So the first thing that I want to say about that is absolutely absurd. This is something that I don't feel that people are taking serious. Some people were very upset about this in which they have every right to be because this man is literally a man, number one, and doesn't wear these boobs, prosthetic boobs outside of the school. He wears them only in school. This is what furthermore lets you know that there is an agenda that is being pushed for confusion as well as homosexuality, as well as child endangerment and pornography and just by even stirring in the confusion to children it opens them up that curiosity that of the unknown and children are very curious they they wonder and ask questions about literally everything and so 
this man is doing this for attention. And of course, the demon that is manifesting through him is trying to spark the curiosity out of the kids and trying to plant these seeds. Because we got to know everything that we do, every action can be a seed planted. Everything that comes out of our mouth can be a seed planted. But like I said before, you're either a, a vessel for Satan or for God. And why is anything over sexualized being brought into the school? And some of you guys can argue the fact this is in Canada. But if something is happening somewhere else, it's on its way here. And I have another video that I'm going to insert for you guys to see that things are happening. Also, um, this man, like the prosthetic boobs, even are like they have hard nipples. Why are you sexualizing yourself and exposing this false narrative to these children and this is an elementary school i believe that this man should be put on a sex offenders list and he needs to you know he needs to deal with that demon that he, he's carrying within himself but take a look at this next clip all right you guys now moving on jumping into this next story and kind of relatedly because it's about a principal of an oklahoma elementary school and we've obviously been talking about how necessary it is for parents develop the spine to stand up for their students. And I just want to make it clear. I know I have in previous episodes, but I feel I need to make it abundantly clear over and over again that if I ever go to prison, it will be for my children. It's just, I just, I can see it. Something happens to my child. There's some sort of a threat. And I will smile in the mugshot. I will be proud. I know that you guys will greet me outside when I get bail and it will, will cheer. and It'll be amazing. You know, say that's exactly what I expected her to do because this story, woo, it really lights a fire inside of me. A principal of an Oklahoma elementary school that is moonlighting as a drag queen was previously arrested on child porn charges. Yes, this is real, and I'm going to tell you about that principal. His name is Dr. Shane Mernon. He is 52 years old, and he is the principal of John Glenn Elementary School in southwestern Oklahoma City. So, first, right away, for an LGBTQ activist, there's nothing wrong if he also wants to dress up like a drag queen and be in front of kids and read story times. That's just... Mm, I don't know. Love is love. I get it. I hear you. I hear you. I just don't listen to you. I don't listen to you because I have common sense and gut instincts as a parent. And something tells me that if a grown man wants to wear panties and be in front of a child, I should be on alert. And in this circumstance, I would have been right to be alerted because while Mandalay is a well-known local drag queen in circles and also as a part of his drag queen act, likes to mention that he during the daytime is around children. He also has a very troubling personal life that I'm going to tell you about. So he began his career in education in 2001 when he was just 30 years old and he was teaching fifth grade at Will Rogers Elementary School in Stillwater, Oklahoma. Again, elementary school it seems to be where he likes to work. During that time, he was arrested in 2001 and charged with possessing child pornography and drugs. You might wonder, how could someone that has been arrested and charged with child pornography ever then go on to become the principal of a school, again, in elementary school, and be allowed in front of children? Well, I'm going to tell you how. They seized his digital devices at that time. They were able to glean at least four images of pornographic material. However, a judge later determined that the prosecutors had not proven that the victims in the images were, in fact, underage. So this is how the internet works. So even if you have a picture of a child and they're able to say this is an underage child, the prosecution has to prove this is the actual child that is in the photo and I am showing you documentation that this person is 11 years old. Well, they were unable to prove that, right? The judge said, I don't think that you have adequately proven this. Another judge disagreed and said, no, absolutely, this is child pornography. It's obvious, okay? But then a another court sided with the first judge and Dr. Mernon got lucky. They dismissed the child porn charges on essentially a technicality. And this is who they're letting teach schools as well as principal over your children, okay? When these people are subjected to sin and they're living in sin and, you know, they're homosexuals and they're drag queens, people might say, well, that's their personal life. But you need to know who you're allowing to be head and in charge over your children, even when they go to public school. That very much should be concerning to any parent because it's not just, oh, that this person is homosexual or they're into drag queen. They dress on part time. This man was also involved with child pornography because sin is unquenchable. One thing is not enough. It's not enough just being a homosexual. It's not enough. Just you can't quench it. 
You cannot. So that means once you are endowed with sin, you're going to continue down that path and it's never enough. These are the people that you're letting parent your kids outside of your parenting because they're going to school and so they have to implement some type of discipline and teaching so you're allowing your kids to be part-time taught by satan you're allowing your children to be part-time in agreement with the school system and the demonic crap that they're pouring out where we have teachers that are openly telling kids that it is okay to be gay and to be transgender. And I'm talking about children in elementary school. It doesn't make any sense that children should be over-sexualized. They're supposed to be going to school, getting an understanding of how to do simple math and, and learning just things to help better them and, and to build their character. But we have this school system now that is infiltrated by Satan. And he's trying to get the children. And another harsh reality is some people, number one, they say homeschooling is too expensive. When it's really not, there are programs that are cheap that you can teach your children or you can do them by the book yourself. Why you order all the books and that's a more complicated way. But they also have programs that are put in place that will teach your children. But people will say that it's too complicated. And some people think that school, their children going to school is a break for them. And that's a very sad case. Yes, as parents, you do need a break from your children. But to subject them to these demonic agendas is absolutely absurd. You should not want to be a parent that is okay with this. And if you need guidance, ask the Lord to help you find a program that you can pull your children out of these demonic schools. This is why more kids are being brought up and they're depressed or anxious. They hate people. My sister in Christ, she literally works at a juvenile detention center. And there are 14 and 15 year old boys that have murdered people. And they're subject to their environments, to their school systems. And then if they don't have the best parenting, then they're listening to these rap music that's glamorizing murder and doing drugs and opening these children up to this false light and thinking that it's cool. Then we have these video games that are teaching killing and all these things. And so my sister in Christ was even telling me like, it's such a sad state to see these children in and subjected to doing this stuff. The enemy is using them as a vessel. And so it first starts within the home. You have to be making sure that you are stewarding your children in the right way because the world is only going to grow more cold. The world is only going to get worse. We are really in an evil time right now and it's only going to get worse isaiah 5 20 says woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter so we have to know that this is a time and age that everybody is calling everything light and everything good evil and vice versa we are really living in a wicked time as to where the people that are doing the right thing, the upright thing, are being deemed as evil or they're being deemed as the ones that are doing the wrong thing. And all the bad stuff is being glorified. Everything bad is being glorified. And it gives us this false sense of this is what the world should be doing. This is what we should be on. We should be doing bad things. We have to understand where is this narrative coming from? And honestly, as a parent, you really need to reevaluate your whole life if school is the only sense of break that you get. There are many things that, you know, parents face, especially if you're a single parent, but I just want to let you guys know it's not impossible. Ever since COVID in 2020, I've been homeschooling my children and I've even gotten backlash from my family as opposed to not putting them back into school, how they could be deemed as weird or socially awkward. And it's like, at the end of the day, my kids will be instilled with biblical principles and the correct character development that they need. And they won't have to face the everyday struggles of peer pressure, insecurities, not saying that they'll be exempt from these things, but there won't be so much of a social pressure from the people that are their age. Train them up in the way that the child should go so when they get old, they do not depart from it. And even if they do 
and when they get older, like the prodigal son, they go out for a little bit. They will always be rooted in Christ. They will always have those seeds imparted within their soul and they will come back to Jesus. But when we have this school system that's trying to get the children as far away from biblical principles as possible and confuse them and stir up all this different demonic agenda and stir up all these things that are just, they can be avoided, okay? Then this puts that child at risk for just so much spiritual damage and inadequacies from a child on up. But this is even why the Holy Spirit instructed me to take my children out of school. And even though my own mother has asked me why I'm not putting them back into school. And it's my prerogative. This is the way that I know that is right for my children. And they won't be exposed to a lot of nonsense. And when that time does come, say if they see something on TV or if we're out, then they will get the correct interpretation from their mother who is filled with the Holy Spirit. And that way I can teach them the right thing because they may see that thing in school whatever the situation may be and get the wrong type of revelation from from a child that thinks that it's okay and so ultimately your child will make the decision but it is very important that we are surrounding our children with love and in truth so that they will have mindsets to make the right decisions when these different situations arise as there are teenagers and adults so everything stems from the home everything stems from your child's childhood i know it's not physically or spiritually possible to guard your children from everything and that's not the case but we want to at least instill the right things within them so that they can make the right decisions when those times approach because nobody's exempt from the enemy nobody can totally be just out of harm's way at all times of their lives. We go through seasons of testing and trial. So we just have to instill the right things within our children and it does not start in public school. We need to be leading by example as parents, teaching our children the ways of God and how to walk like Jesus, how to be like Jesus, how to love on people. Although there are people hurting that have been exposed to darkness, but we need to be teaching our children how to still love those people and to bring them into truth. And we have such a corrupt government system and now school system, and even some of the church has been so corrupted. So we have to take a stand as children of God and as parents, we owe that to our children. We owe that to God. God, we owe that to ourselves you guys we have to be just in the right mindset spiritually and be able to be wise enough to make the decisions that will impact not only our lives but our children's lives we want them to have better than we did it starts with us it starts with Jesus and it ends with us and it ends with Jesus so if you're seeing this video and you feel led to pull your children out of schools not to even mention the kids that are getting bullied they've been bringing weapons to school killing children fighting bullying like all these different things can be avoided but we have to take that leap of faith and trust the lord so if the lord is tugging on you to pull your children out of school do not resist this tug do not try to over rationalize why you should and should not. If you feel it in your spirit, you need to obey the Lord. Even if you have to fast and pray about it, do that. But take heed to the word because God is not just going to have you do something for no reason. That means he could be saving your child from something. But just to let the Lord direct you, let the Lord be the author of your life and your children's life and give your children a chance. Don't let the enemy make you feel like it's too hard or for you to make excuses. You can do it. Ask the Lord for the direction on how to do it. Um, and he will. But the Lord could very well be saving your child from spiritual oppression, demonic oppression, or even something way worse which could be killing because there there's been a an increase in the crime rates within school systems so father god in the name of jesus we just 
ask for a complete covering over these children in the nation, Father. We ask that every demonic and evil teacher that has been used by the enemy, we ask that they be removed from the school system. God, we ask that you uproot those teachers and you expose them for who they are and what they are doing in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask that you do a complete sweep of all the evil doing in these government systems, in the school systems, in these leaders that are trying to lead your people astray. Father God, I ask that you call them out, Father God. May they be exposed and uprooted right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that there be a a covering put on your children, a covering put on the people that are still working these government jobs. And may there be a grace that is given to them until they are revealed the truth to by your spirit and that they can come out of it, Father God. We ask that you do a complete covering of the children that are now in the school systems and they're being exposed to this demonic evil father god i just ask that you bring your children out in jesus's mighty name father and i ask that for the parent that is wanting their child to be out of these school systems out of this demonic cycle father god i ask that you give them the courage that they need and that you give them the tools that they need to be able to pull their child out of this demonic system and so that they can be good stewards over their children and they can instill the things that they need those biblical foundations that the children may need so that they can overcome and succeed in life god we ask all these things in jesus name and i just seal this prayer up with the blood of jesus christ and I just want to encourage you guys, if you are feeling led, go into the secret place and ask the Lord for step-by-step -step directions on what you need to do to be able to execute this. He will give it to you. Stand in faith and know that this is for a better cause. I love you guys. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, get the word out. All right. Amen.